Hi everyone, welcome to the episode number three of the color therapy. Today I want to switch it up a little bit and move on from the three colors that we have been using, which are these three colors. So it's the turquoise, uh, cobalt turquoise by Schmink, Rutile Yellow by Daniel Smith and the Daniel Smith Aussie Red Gold. I will leave the links below in case you are loving these colors as much as I am. But today I want to talk about the analogs. So analog colors are colors that can go up to five colors on the color wheel and they have to be sort of one after the other like the you know you couldn't just randomly pick five colors from the uh, color wheel they have to be within that sort of range so you could start anywhere like you could start with red and these would be your five colors you could swing you could start from red and swing to the other side uh perhaps i don't know kind of this doesn't really work for me i feel like that would be a better choice of five colors so the idea is today that i want to pick something from this color setting so i want to have a nice pinky color i definitely want to stay away from red and i would recommend to do the same there is nothing wrong with red color um you know it's it's a color though that is very powerful and it's a color that can trigger um kind of a, a, a different set of emotions i don't find a red color to be um you know relaxing color um it is color of love it is color of passion it is color of aggression it's color of blood so you can find different uh, variables for the color and you can see some good in it as well but um because this is color therapy and I'm trying to design this series to be really relaxing and therapeutic, I would recommend to stay away from it. Now, you have to be careful when you pick uh, pinks and oranges and yellows because that, mixing them, if you are working wet and wet, that will lead back to red. Yeah. What I'm thinking of doing today is looking at my palette and picking colors that I really like the look of. And today I want to do a floral, floral kind of watercolor wash. And you'll see later what I mean. So I think I will, I think I will go, actually, I'll just go for two colors and I'll make it a lot simpler. I'll pick a yellow and I'll pick a quinacridone red. So by avoiding the oranges i am not in the risk of creating red so i'm going to go with the white knights quinacridone red which by the way they started doing their watercolors in tubes this year so if you want to include a white knights color if you love their vibrancy and you want to include it in your palette then you can do it now because they're available in tubes um, and then for the yellow i'm going to go for the daniel smith nickel Azu yellow so I want a very light wash today and I'm going to start with this lovely pink and I'm just going to create a lovely little almost like a round shape and if you remember I said we're going to do a floral piece today so I'm going to then also take the same color but slightly darker and then while it's still wet, I, I want to touch it into this color and let it sort of move into there a little bit. Now we're going to do yet stronger color and one just on the side here. So just think of like petals and that sort of shape kind of of a thing. And we have the same one color, but in three different strengths. And now it's time to go into that beautiful yellow, which is the nickel Azo yellow. And I'm going to touch it in certain areas and that will create a lovely orange as, as opposed to a red. And then I can also glaze a little bit on the side here. Mm 
at the minute it's all very um, kind of abstract it's not really telling us much of what's happening here so I'm going to let this color go into here like that okay at this point while it's still dry I'm going to load my brush with water and just dab water in different areas like so that will create loads of blooms like that so I'm not going to do more than this to this little kind of wash of color and actually just want to soften the edges there all right this is it I'm going to go ahead and dry this and now as always I like to lift a couple of the remaining colors the darker the color is the more visible it is um, when you're doing the lifting technique and this is what we are left with so we have a touch of brightness here which is not red it's a pink color uh, we have some really subtle almost pastel um, kind of peach colors here by mixing a very light wash of the yellow and the pink and then we have some middle kind of strength of a pink over here and that is pretty much it. I love how the pigment has been pushed right to the edge of the puddles in this area. So now let's look at this little wash that we've done and create a lovely uh, whimsical um, like a floral doodle out of this. By the way, it's still very hot here. We had like three days in a row uh, of 32 degrees outside and it's end of August so it's very untypical weather for UK and I have really enjoyed it because for a change this weather happened on a bank holiday which we tend to have always rain on it's just like a given so when you get this weather it's just so lovely to have like picnics in the park and all sorts and barbecues okay so let's try and think so we have a little kind of floral shape over here there is something here 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 so there is a variety of things i could do but i think i would love to start with this main one over here and i'm going to go ahead and just kind of messily line out a floral shape like so I am then going to also create a center and then I want to create petals the pen I am using is a Muji pen and it's a 0 0.25 and it's fantastic for doodling. Now doodling in itself combined with color of course is a very therapeutic thing to do and I really love it because what you're doing is you're just concentrating on lines and there is no way you could think of any other troubles you're having outside that um, you know that are normally on your mind when you're doing this sort of thing so I'm going to go ahead and now sort of almost correct the lines of the petals and it depends for what style you're going if you're going for something crisp then one line would be plenty if you're going for something whimsical uh, outlining it a couple of times it's actually makes it a bit more vivid so all of a sudden we have a flower there now let's continue with creating these little oval shapes think of them as Kind of like, uh, you know, those stick doodles 
but these are the ovals. So what I would do here is I would start coloring in between. I hope it's nice and warm in your uh, country. I generally don't like it when it's too hot, but I think it's been such a busy summer for us that actually really slowing down and enjoying doing nothing this weekend. Although actually it was busy as well, what am I saying? But at least we combined it by, you know, relaxing a little. Um, so I'm just going ahead and concentrating on lining or not lining but filling the areas in between these ovals like so so that is looking quite nice now because we have like a dark center to this now you could totally leave it as it is and in fact if you're not certain that's what I would do let's just move on to the next one you can always come back and start doing some more line work on the petals or if you prefer to see the watercolor washes on here then you can um, do some more doodling on top so let's go ahead and create another flower which I'm also going to line out like so and this flower I'm going to put the center um, slightly wonky you don't want it to be all in one line and then uh, let's see maybe I'll just repeat the shapes of the petals and some of them will be a little bit covered underneath this flower here but what's important is to kind of separate them so they don't look like they are stuck together if that makes sense so again let's go ahead now and whatever we need to in a way correct we're going to do that now and there is our second flower now in fact you could continue and create like a build structure of flowers or you could leave some of the watercolor untouched and that would be like a background wash almost but I do want to create a third flower because the rule of three is um, always quite flattering to the eye there is something about the trio of things so I am going to now finish doing the center and then we will continue. All right, so the third flower, I probably want to be here. So I'm going to line out this little thing right here, like so. And then going over it again. So as you can see, I left this bit out because it would look a little bit odd. And I think what I'm going to do is now create a different center. So I'm not going to do it black, but because I have a white in here, I'm just going to do black marks instead. Uh, but I'm going to just continue with the petals as I did before. Like that. It's such relaxing thing to do doodling it's really good for your mental health and just general well-being really so again we're going to 
wonkily line out these petals because you're not looking at making the lines thicker but you're making um, creating that sort of almost like a lace effect you know when they're layered on top of each other like that and then I'm going to line out the center again and this time I'm just going to kind of create these um, little oval shapes like so and that on contrast to the previous two looks really interesting also because it's a darker color to those two now you could finish here but i feel like i would like to add some sort of some sort of petals or not petals leaves so i'm going to just go ahead and draw some out like that and similar to what we've done before I'm going to line them out a couple more times I'm also going to thicken them in certain areas like that try not to go too much overboard with it and one line in the middle i still want to see the lovely watercolor beneath it and so um, I'm not looking to create too many details, but just a couple. So that is it for today. And it's, um, it's a nice thing to look at pastel colors and have some colors that are a bit more vibrant and cheerful looking as well i'm just thinking that white center i kind of want it to be black as well hmm and i wonder what would happen if i'm going to take some white gel pen and just add some of the white that kind of looks better to me yeah i feel like this area here needs to be black as well so i'm just gonna go ahead and do that okay so here it is and all i've done is just um left those white little area from the paper and just lined it out in black as well and it looks super super pretty what I will do, because I just feel uh, it needs a little touch, is I'm going to use that Aztec Gold by Daniel Smith again. I'm going to load my brush and make sure it's not just water, but nice and creamy. Load it with the pigment. And now I'm just going to... Give it a few little gold speckles and let's dry it and I will show you what it looks like. Might as well put some more here. And now it looks pretty pretty to me with a little bit around here like so. Never too many speckles, especially when they're gold. Okay, right. So now it's totally perfect to me it looks a little bit more distressed and from looking also pretty it has now this really lovely organic look to it so you can still see the watercolor effects 
um, from underneath the doodling but the doodling just enhanced it a little bit more and make it look um, but yeah like like you know like a botanical little watercolor piece rather than just a blob of watercolor wash so that is it for today i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next episode